2004 regular Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting. Um, I'd just like to say that I'm sitting in this evening for Kevin Sweeney, who is at home recuperating from knee surgery. And on behalf of all of us, we'd like to wish him well and hope for a very speedy recovery. And with that, we'd like to rise to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, See, we have um, one adjustment to the agenda this evening under new business, item J. We'll be adding a consideration of action to approve an out-of-state field trip. Are there any other adjustments? No? Okay. Um, we have the approval of the October school board minutes. So we need a motion to accept the school board minutes as presented. I actually have a, change, a little addition to make. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I just need to make sure that Trish Brigham's name was added to the attendees at the communications committee meeting. That was under my report, page 49B, 10C. Just have it read Rebecca Millett and Trish Brigham met with Ann Belden. Okay, so with that change, do we have a motion to accept the minutes with that change? Elaine? I move that we accept the uh, minutes of our October school board report uh, with the changes noted uh, by Rebecca. Second? Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Um, next we have comments by our high school and middle school students. We'll have the high school first. Is Connor here this evening? And we have someone else as well. Thanks. Uh, good evening. Uh, sorry, talking about the high school. We have a whole slew of activities going on now, um, most notably theater. Uh, we have a fall show coming up on Friday, November the 19th, Monday the 21st. Uh, Monday the 22nd and the 23rd, I believe. Um, it will include a one-act performance, which is directed by one of the students at Cape Elizabeth High School, Sam Roos, uh, Picasso at the La Pan Agie, written by Steve Martin. It's about, uh, and then we also have an improv act that will go on and two or three bands that will play. Uh, everything has been split up into thirds, kind of, and the show will be divided among three days each with a different uh, selection. One day we'll have a band and uh, Picasso. The other day we'll have Picasso and improv, and the other one will be improv and a band. Um, also, we have the 5v5 football tournament where the students get together and create their teams of six or seven and have five people on the field. And uh, we just have a tournament to see who wins a 5v5 tournament for the year. It's a lot of fun. Most of the students get involved with it. and. Um, all right. Um, uh, winter sports are starting up in the next two weeks. This includes hockey, winter track, cross-country skiing, basketball, and swimming and diving. And uh, all the students are anticipating this. Uh, the hockey games especially seem to attract most of the high school population. They're a lot of fun. And they're good for the school. Um, other notable things that are happening in the school, the uh, renovations, which seem to be going fine. Uh, recently, a couple bathrooms were closed for a couple of days. Uh, everyone seemed fine with that. The gym's been closed for a while, but it's going to be opening in the next few weeks before basketball season starts. And anticipation seems to be teeming over that. Everyone's looking into the gym, seeing what's going on. Uh, very curious about it. And um, I've also heard that in the next couple of weeks, we'll be losing the calf, the cafeteria for. Uh, like seven days or a week and a half um, while they remove tiles. And I think that will go over fine with the students. A lot of people sit out in the hallway anyway, so that should be fine for that week. 
And in terms of the SAC, uh, before the election, uh, they were successful in distributing flyers uh, to on all the students' lockers about uh, the tax cap and uh, just information about it, you know, what, what it would entail. And that seemed to be successful. I heard a lot of kids talking about, you know, sports are going to cost this much and parking will cost five million dollars and all this stuff. Um, so I think that was uh, good to get the uh, word out to the students so they knew what was going on. And most recently, this past week, the SAC has been looking at the uh, uh, substance abuse policy that the SAC last year uh, wrote and seeing if we're going to ratify it or if we're going to uh, put it into action or not. And so that's about it. Are there any questions for our high school students? No. Okay, thanks very much, and thanks for taking your evening to come here tonight. Thank you for having me. Next, we have Nora Daly and Liza Mellon for the middle school. Um, hi, I'm Elsa Mellon. I'm Nora. Um, the school year is going superb. The seventh graders are raising money for the program Operation Smile. The program was founded by the former Cape Elizabeth students who, ra who raised money to go over to Africa with dentists to work on people's teeth who can't afford the, t uh, them themselves. The fifth and sixth graders just had two socials in, late in the late October. They w went bowling in Saka. They enjoyed the bowling and also the arcade. I was able to attend the, f the first and chaperone it. Um, it looked as though everyone was having a good time and it was a success. The Sally Foster fundraiser is finishing with great results, averaging with an amazing amount of over $30,000 raised. The, the gift wrapping paper will be delivered soon, and the prizes were handed out yesterday. Nora and I attended a conference with many other 7th and 8th graders about the laptops It was um, in Augusta. It was all day long on a Saturday in October. There were many different uh, classes and three sessions during uh, in three sessions. During each session, you would choose a class of your choice. It went well, and I'm glad I went. There are, ma there are many ideas that I have gotten from the conference that I believe that would uh, go well in our school laptop program. Speaking of laptops, the seventh graders are off to a great start with their laptops. Some issues within the student council are one of them being community service projects. Our president, Sierra Intel, is doing a great job. She has organized a fundraiser to raise $100 to send to an African orphanage. That $100 will give one child a whole year of education. The reason I know this is because the former of the program and called by the orphan's mom came in with a friend who had volunteered in Africa. They talked all about the program and, stu and the student council voted with to go with this fundraiser and raise the $100. The year is going great and everything is going smoothly. Thank you. We have had two successful months of school, but we are all looking forward to Thanksgiving break. There have been so many activities, like Elsa said, the IT meeting in Augusta. There has been a fifth grade social. The fifth grade went on their field trip to Kettle Cove. The student council collected bears for the fire station while getting up for the holiday season, feed the hungry food drive, and sponsor a family for the holiday seasons. Sally Foster went very well, like Elsa said, raising over $30,000 for our school's outdoor education. Also, all four fall sports ended, and the winter sports such as basketball and cross-country skiing started this week. The last show of Midsummer's night ter midterm, directed by Mr. Solander, was on Saturday, and it went very well, and there will be another play in the spring. Any questions? Any questions? Thanks very much, and thanks to you too for coming tonight also. Um, item five, communications. First on that tonight is um, the Maine School Board Association held its annual conference a couple of weeks ago, and several of the school board members went, and a few would like to report briefly on the workshops that they attended. Who would like to go first? I will. Uh, I attended a, a workshop on No Child Left Behind, 
which was great. Um, it was a wonderful overview of the law in the context of sort of public edu the public education system in the U.S. Um, historically and currently. And I think um, what I got out of it was that all of the school districts are sort of struggling with some of the same challenges that we are. Um, that there is hope in Washington that they realize that there are things that need to be probably more than tweaked in the law to, um, to sort of accomplish its goals. And that the time, one of these tweaks may be extending the timeline. The, the timeline is very aggressive in terms, as you all know, in terms of implementing it. Um, and, and it appears while there's no commitments that that may change. And I guess I also walked away with it with and this prompted me to write a thank you um, letter to the editor to the Cape Courier that I am wholly impressed with the efforts that are being made by all the people in our school system to get this law as well as the main learning results um, implemented. It's just amazing and I have a great appreciation, greater than I had in the past for all that's being done in the school. So I wanted to say thank you. I also attended a workshop on school finance pitfalls. Um, in terms of passing budgets and um, contract negotiation, not contract, um, soliciting contracts and bids. And it was good for a new school board member, but much of the information was a little bit more um, applicable to school administration districts as opposed to ourselves. And lastly, that while this was not a workshop, I did attend the luncheon on Thursday, and it was a presentation on why we are so passionate about education and just very thought provoking that education sort of embodies the American ideal and is truly a community, um, a center for many communities. So it was just sort of thought provoking and inspirational. Thanks, Trish. <clears throat> Other reports? Um, well, I attended two uh, sessions on Friday. Um, one of them was called uh, Coaching Maine Youth to Success. Um, it's part of an initiative through the University of Maine to um, look at professional development and public awareness um, to create model interscholastic sports programs. Um, they are working on developing best principles and practices for inter interscholastic um, athletics. And um, some of the outcomes that they are going to be discussing are um, up upgrading the quality of training provided to coaches, developing and incorporating core principles and practices, strengthening and expanding the capacity for the University of Maine. It has, it has a special sports center um, to, to help various schools throughout Maine. Um, raising parental and public awareness about healthy sports experiences and responsible spectator behavior. Uh, increasing the aspirations and school performance of student athletes and providing opportunities for all kids who want to play. Um, they're going to be rolling out their initiative in December statewide and I think um, it's going to be very interesting to see what the public's response to is. There's a lot of energy around this. There was a packed room and lots of opinions. The second um, workshop that I attended was on essential programs and services. Um, for those at home that don't know, we were, State of Maine is going to be using um, a new form, funding formula uh, for school uh, operating programs. And um, basically it's saying that each town, city, or SAD will not be having to pay more than eight mils of the total town valuation for programs and services that the state determines as essential for any programs and services that we, we want to have that are outside of that um, essential um, definition, the town or city will pay 100% um, pay of it. Some key elements of the formula is the student count um, and then this rate that they have developed per student. Um, there will be weighted uh, amounts for any sort of economically disadvantaged or limited English students. And then there's going to be a certain amount of money allotted towards assessment and technology. And finally, there is going to be a regional cost adjustment because the state is aware that some areas in the state of Maine pay a higher price for salaries than in others. Um, and finally, they discussed, uh, again, another packed room, by the way, and lots of strong opinions, um, a lot of concern. 
Um, the other part of the discussion was the eventual raising of the state commitment to pay 55% of um, education costs in the state of Maine. And um, at currently they're at about 45% and they're projecting to get up to 55% about 2010, I believe. Um, it's important for us in Cape Elizabeth to be aware, however, that um, when they say 55%, they mean for the total state, um, the, stoto, the total cost for education in the state of Maine. Um, that does not mean that Cape Elizabeth is going to be seeing 55% of the money. Um, the state currently is paying about 45%, and I believe we receive anywhere between 10 and 12%. So we're way below that targeted amount. So I just, uh, for me personally, I need to, I would like to get the information out to our, our community that when you hear 55%, don't think that we will be receiving 55%. It's a, a lot of the money that we get um, is determined on the state valuation. And as we all know, Cape Elizabeth, we have a very high level of valuation. Thanks, Rebecca. Anyone else? Elaine? A few things. Um, I attended on Thursday, and uh, I went to th three different clinics. Uh, the first one was on the Maine's uh, new Freedom of Access Act and some of the changes and updates regarding um, uh, ways to avoid litigation, privacy violations, and decision-making decision, decision -making violations. Um, so um, that was useful, it's something that um, we needed to be updated on. Um, and the other one I went to is called uh, Do Your Bylaws Need Buffing? Um, and we went, I went to that basically because it was something that was on our school board goals for this year, was to take a look at our bylaws and how we govern ourselves. Um, it was quite a lengthy presentation, um, and it talked a lot about the types of meetings that um, boards have, committees, uh, parliamentary authority, um, agenda development, uh, content of minutes, policy development. Uh, we talked about ethical standards and ethical violations of board members, um, public participation, how to handle media, and then there was a, a discussion on Robert's Rules of Orders and to be used as a guide with school boards across the uh, state um, in an organizing tool, but not the end all as far as uh, uh, conduction of the meetings. The best clinic I went to um, was called Building Strong Leadership Teams and it was given by a woman by the name of Kitty um, Bloomsack, who's a director of board development from Maryland. And um, since we were a relatively new board, um, I was really curious as to what they would identify uh, aspects that we should continue from the success of our previous boards and what aspects we need to build upon. Um, she talked about four critical components of high-performing teams uh, being a vision, uh, being effective communication, uh, establishment of norms, and the uh, appropriate roles and responsibilities for various members. Um, I think that the, um, the way it was given was that there was a lot of breakout. It was actually during two sessions, so it was two hours. And I was in a, a, a breakout group that had a superintendent and two other school boards and an administrator. And uh, it was really kind of fun to hear how other boards do things um, and some of the frustrations they have in communicating and it made it, it made me feel really good because I thought we were coming from a really good place um, and uh, it was just a really useful um, clinic. And then I was the delegate uh, that was responsible for going to the delegate assembly just really quickly, there were three resolutions and it was distributed to the board. Um, I'll just tell you the, what the three resolutions are very quickly. Um, the Maine School Board Association was supporting the full Im implementation of question one from last June to achieve that 55% state share of the K-12 through 12 education. Um, and they voted for that. Uh, the second was in a support of the expansion of the laptops into high school through appropriations to the EPS model. Uh, they wanted to encourage the flexibility of, school dis of this program to allow some school districts to develop alternatives that would give students comparable access via a plan that would be supported by your local school board. Um, and thirdly, their uh, resolution, their last re resolution was 
that while they have been historically supportive of the central programs and services model to ensure the equitable funding and equal access to quality education um, they did have concerns that it is not yet completed and we are as you know starting into our budget season and um, apparently that information is not going to be available to us during the course of that time um, they are also concerned that the focus is on cost containment and rather than providing adequate educational offerings um, and that there will be unintended consequences. So they called for the governor and the commissioner and the board of education to finish the model, to in ensure the original intent, and then they offered their services from the Maine School Board Association um, to work collaboratively on, on finalizing it. Those are that. Great. Thanks, Elaine. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for those reports. Next under communications is um, Commissioner Gendron's letter regarding waiver approval for the main learning results, and I'll hand that to Bob. Uh, yes, Sarah Simmons um, wrote a waiver application for us um, that was granted by the uh, Commissioner um, on October 6th. Uh, a waiver does not give us the right to not put into effect what we need to put in effect on the learning results. All it does is give us more flexibility in making sure that the, the new assessments that we're using don't uh, hurt our students. Um, and we're, we have some options in the coming years to, um, to redo those if we don't feel that they're fair and just as the kids take them. So um, we were um, pleased that we were granted that waiver. At this point, we'll ask if there are any comments from the public. Hey, yeah, I guess not. Um, moving on, we have two items of recognition this evening. Um, the first is for the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, and Elaine and Bob will be giving that. It is the school board's pleasure to award the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation this plaque in appreciation of their contributions to our schools and community. In four short years, past and present members have established an impressive organization with three goals within their own mission. First, the foundation is committed to fostering innovation and excellence in our schools by funding initiatives that have fallen outside our school budget. Secondly, the Education Foundation works to partner with our district to help us all reach our vision of becoming one of the top public school systems in the United States that yields high levels of learning and achievement for all of our students. And lastly, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation strives to be instrumental in building community-wide support for the benefit of our schools. Later this evening, we will hear from SEEP's current president, Patty Grennan, about the exciting things that showcase their dedication and hard work. At this very moment, members are participating in their annual phone-a-thon with the goal of raising $50,000 in their annual campaign. They continue to work towards creating an endowment to build a future upon. Our teachers and students have already benefited from the multitude of classroom grants and large impact grants, such as the extension of our laptop initiative into the high school. They are truly a model for education foundations across our state, and our teachers, students, and community are grateful for the positive impact they have made in our schools. Thank you. Patty, would you come up, please? We are pleased to present this to you, and maybe you can read to the public what it does say. I must first say this is quite a surprise, so thank you. Um, the Cape Elizabeth School Board honors Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation in appreciation for your support to extend the laptop initiative to the ninth grade at the Cape Elizabeth High School, 2004-2005. Thank you. Thank you.
Our next recognition item is for Marie Prager. Marie, if you'd like to come up. It's our honor this evening to present this recognition award tonight to Marie. As you all know, Marie um, served on our school board for six and a half years and was chair of our board for the last two of those. Marie really worked tirelessly on the laptop project, um, beginning probably three years ago when the King administration decided that it was going to take laptops into all seventh grades across the state. Marie got involved um, right away and worked very closely with the administration, with our teachers, especially Gary Lenoy, Nancy Hutton, Bev Bisbee, who's no longer here and um, with her undying determination and passion and support really was responsible for having that um, also be carried into our high school this year for our ninth graders. So we really want to thank her um, very much for all of her work and, and support um, through all these years of making that happen for our schools. Marie. Marie, this is for you. And it says, Marie Prager, in appreciation for your tireless efforts to extend the laptop initiative to the ninth grade at Cape Elizabeth High School, 2004-2005. Thank you so much. Okay, we now have the superintendent's report. If he can find his glasses. <laughs> um, first of all, we have an update on the Educational Foundation, and I believe this is the first time the Educational Foundation has spoken at the school board meeting. So we welcome Patty to give that report first. Thank you, Bob. Um, I need my reading glasses as well. Um, I wanted to thank the school board um, and thank all of you for inviting me here um, tonight to speak on behalf of the Education Foundation. Um, my name is Patty Grennan, and I am president um, of the CAPE Education Foundation, or as I think the acronym that's becoming more familiar is um, CEF, um, locally. And prior to coming to tonight's meeting, I asked um, Bob Lyman and Elaine Maloney, who are education advisors on our board, what I should tell um, the school board and really share with the community um, about um, the foundation. And they said two specific things. Um, to share with uh, the community and the school board about Steve's desire to be supportive of school board and their work. And secondly, to, to share um, about Steve's desire to become a collaborative partner and help the school achieve its vision of becoming uh, one of the top schools in the U.S. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit, and if you can indulge me for a little bit, because this is our first time um, coming here, just to share with you a little bit about how we began, what our roots were, um, who we are, and um, who we'd like to become. Um, the Cape Education Foundation, as um, we, uh, we were noted earlier, began less than four years ago. Um, and although um, at the time there were lots of groups who were supporting um, our schools, no one was looking um, at the district as a whole. And really, um, there was you know, the, um, individual parent teachers for one school or another or a booster group. And specifically at that time, um, Tom Forsella, who was a superintendent, um, brought to Cape Elizabeth the idea of the private-public partnership. Um, thus, the idea was born to foster and to, um, to establish an independent nonprofit group of community residents um, who are committed to fostering specifically innovation and excellence in Cape schools. And the idea um, was to do this in three ways. By building community-wide support for our schools. Secondly, to partner with the district to help it achieve its vision of becoming one of the top schools in the U.S. And by funding initiatives that fell outside of the school budget. Um, so how do we do this now? Um, by building community support, we, it's our hope to engage the whole community um, in support of our schools. And we do this through our fund uh, raising initiatives such as um, Luminaries for Education, which we have coming up in December, where we're, we're asking the whole community to light up in honor of our schools, in honor of our teachers, and to light luminaries, um, as well um, 
to our, our spelling bee, which is kind of a zany community event where all kinds of community members get together and have fun and support um, the mission of um, excellence in education um, with a good old fashioned spelling bee. Um, the second thing is to buy partnering with the district to help them achieve its vision. Um, and what we mean by this is we hope to have an ongoing dialogue about what specifically our district needs um, to get there is to be one of the top schools. Um, this past, past spring, we met with the district leadership team and we asked them um, to dream, to tell us what, what would do that, what would, what would get us to um, that place. And um, they came up with 30 ideas. The ideas were endless and it was really great to hear and hear them be inspired. Um, and uh, from those three ideas, as a group, they, they um, prioritized three things. Um, their top priority was a laptop initiative, and we um, were pleased at that time that we were able to partner with the school board and fund half that initiative and bring it to the high school and make that a reality. Um, and finally, the last thing um, is by funding initiatives that fall outside of the school budget. And what we mean by that is that there's a, um, a certain standard of excellence that um, is in, inherent in, um, it's kind of the responsibility of the basic ta taxpayer. And what we'd like to be is to, again, that driving force that help us to become one of um, uh, the top schools in, in the U.S. and to make sure that our students are among the best prepared in the U.S. And we do this, um, as we mentioned earlier, right now we are in the middle. We launched our annual campaign, um, it started on Monday, and right now as we are here, people are calling. And even some of the people here in the audience, and some of you might have been called last night, um, looking for continued support of the foundation. Our goal is to raise $50,000, and in 2005, we plan to ch channel our community funds um, to the schools in three ways. What we like to think of as our three-legged stool, which is um, to fund teacher um, classroom grants, um, because by funding um, grants within inspiring our teachers to, uh, to, to reach out and to bring to their classroom their creative ideas, we believe that our kids will be inspired um, through professional development grants. And through the third thing, our district-wide large impact grants, um, which, which we, again, um, it's basically funding those big ideas to help pull us along. And, and lastly, to create a permanent endowment um, to fund those ideas. Um, our newsletter, which all of you um, probably read, details more specifically what we're doing. And I hope as we, um, as I leave here today, what well, the school board and the community will realize is that um, we would like to become uh, a supportive, permanent partner in making this all happen. And I want, must share one last thing, a really great piece. Part of our vision is to, because we think um, this, the idea of a public-private partnership um, is is a wonderful thing, and, and in fact, it's not unique um, at all. There are seven over 7,000 foundations nationwide, but there are, there are only four here in Maine. This last um, Thursday, a, a group of us went up to meet, were invited to meet with Commissioner Gendron. Um, Elaine Maloney was one of those um, people to talk about specifically how we would like to be a, a resource for other communities um, to, to work with us and to hear about what we're doing here and take that um, private-public partnership um, to improve uh, other um, communities and the education within Maine. Um, so we're thrilled about what we're doing and we hope that you're so, um, you hear that we're supportive of all the work and um, look forward to um, hearing and funding um, the innovative ideas in the future. Thank you. Are there any questions for Patty? No. Thanks so much, Patty. I, I read your newsletter. I thought it looked terrific. You've gotten so many people involved over the years, and I think we're very fortunate to have your organization in our community. And we know you have people out there tonight making phone calls as well and tomorrow night, so we sure. urge people to help out. Um, also on the superintendent's report, or under the superintendent's report, I'd like to introduce Sarah Simmons. Um, we have had a number of late start days this year. Um, they are, I know, not loved by everybody, but I believe we're a necessity um, in the scheduling and uh, the ability to get some work done, and I'd like to give Sarah a chance to explain that work that teachers are doing. Sure. And um, I guess before I um, provide you with some information about how we've been using the late start days that we've had, just wanted to 
briefly provide just a bit of context around the late start days, why the late start days, how that decision was made, um, and why that decision was made. Um, as you may be aware, the state law mandates that all school districts across the state um, adopt and fully implement local assessment systems to measure student progress toward achievement of the learning results. And among other things, in order to develop a local assessment system, it requires teachers to work together in either grade level or content area groups to develop multiple assessments, usually somewhere between eight and 12 assessments in a content area across a series of grades um, to develop those assessments and their accompanying um, administration guidelines and materials, as well as to then calibrate and score the resulting student work, and then to use the data from the student work to revise and refine the assessments, and also to examine curriculum and instruction and make any necessary adjustments based on the student data. So the kinds of assessments that we're talking about with our local assessment system are, are very different kinds of assessments than what um, perhaps um, the public might be used to, to hearing about. They are far more, as, as uh, locally developed curriculum embedded assessments, they are far more complex uh, but yet they provide, the information they provide is far more valuable and more meaningful than uh, large-scale on-demand assessments similar to the MEA. So uh, while there, there's a great deal of responsibility and work that's involved with them, we get good stuff from them uh, as a result of administering them. Um, so all of that, all of those, uh, all of the work uh, that goes into developing those assessments takes a great deal of time and effort. And it's important to note that teachers have done, uh, are, being, are doing this work on top of an already very full plate. Uh, before this year, the, uh, at least the K through eight staff members didn't have adequate common planning time to be able to do this work and uh, for grade level content area teams to meet. So the, uh, the concept of the multiple late start days was introduced so that um, common planning type could be found during the school day. Uh, we looked at other, there are other models of providing common planning time. This was the most cost effective. Most of the other models to provide um, common planning time involve hiring more staff or creating other programs or adding teacher days. Um, so this was the most cost effective way to get the time that was necessary um, in order to do the work. So um, we've been using, we've had five late start days so far this year for the K-8 staff members. And the first late start day um, was used for um, cross grade level content area groups to meet. For example, all of the fifth through eighth grade social studies teachers got together or all of the science teachers got together to look at the work that was done over the course of last year and over the summer um, to establish or begin to frame out what those 8 to 12 assessments would be. Um, last year, most of the work that was done was really done by small representative groups of teachers instead of uh, all teachers being involved in that work. And so it was important for all staff members to have a chance to touch base with that um, and to see what had happened over the summer. There was a great deal of work that happened over the summer. Um, so in those uh, content area groups, the groups, uh, the teachers examined the selection and distribution of the assessments, what's happening where, um, how does it fit with the existing curriculum. They looked at the decisions that had been, been made um, and then made some last minute adjustments. And uh, all, of, all of those decisions needed to make sure that they balanced the integrity of the existing curriculum with the developmental needs of the students and also the need to gather information about student progress toward learning results earlier in the grade span versus saving everything to the, the last uh, couple of, of grades um, so that we would have time to be able to support students if they were having uh, trouble. So uh, that's how the, the first day, getting everybody together to look and see the big picture, see across several different grade, grade uh, levels. Subsequent uh, late start days have primarily been used in grade level or smaller sub-grade level uh, meetings. For example, in eighth grade, it's 
the entire eighth grade doesn't need to meet together as they do in Pond Cove. The fourth grade teachers would get together, but at the middle school, it might be the two or three people on the eighth grade team who teach social studies would get together. Um, the work that they've been doing over these last four days that we've had late starts, finishing any necessary assessment development, um, revising and refining assessments based on feedback from me about the validity of the task and the alignment of the task, um, then developing or revising any administration guidelines. One of the things that's very important with these certification assessments is the consistency of administration between teachers. So teachers need to have a chance to talk with one another about how much time are you giving, how are you responding to questions, um, so there's consistent administration. Um, and the other important thing that's been happening is the opportunity for staff members to work with special education teachers and instructional support staff members. As you may be aware, all these assessments that we're developing are for all students. All students will be taking these assessments through a variety of avenues. Most students will be taking them with regular administration. Some will be taking them needing accommodations. And other students, a very small number of students, will be taking alternate assessments. But it's an important link between, it's important to make the link between special education, instructional support, and regular classroom teachers. And the Late Start Days have provided opportunities for that communication to take place. Um, during our most recent Late Start Day, uh, we included a, a component of having each grade level scoring facilitator. Each grade level sent a representative to a, two, a series of two days of training so that they could learn how to lead their colleagues in the process of validating, calibrating, um, establishing benchmark papers, the anchor papers, and then going through the scoring process. So as a part of the Late Start Day, some, those uh, scoring facilitators shared some information and gave their colleagues a preview of what's going to be happening during the two days uh, a teacher workshop before Thanksgiving. The feedback that we've received from staff members with regard to the late start days has been um, overwhelmingly positive. The, the um, primary comment that I hear from people is, I can't imagine what we would have done if we didn't have this time. Um, people truly appreciate the opportunity to have uh, a chance to connect with one, or one another during the school day, and they are doing as much as they possibly can in the amount of time that they have. I, selfishly, <laughs> have found it very uh, helpful and important for me to be able to put my roller skates on during the late start days and go and meet with each of the small groups. Um, I had more of a chance this in these five days to meet with smaller groups of larger numbers of teachers on a more consistent basis. And uh, so that's providing um, a better, more efficient use of our time. Uh, previously, the time that we had to do this as an entire district was a day in August, a day in November, and a day in March. And so having this more consistent, shorter but more consistent time throughout the course of the year, uh, I think is, uh, is going to really allow us uh, to go further faster than we would have. So in summary, I just wanted to reiterate how thankful we are to, to have that time and how um, we are putting it to good use. And um, we know that it's not the perfect solution, but it's um, serving our needs for, for right now. So I look forward to sharing more information how we continue to use our time over the course of the year. Thanks so much, Sarah, for helping us with that. Are there any questions or comments for Sarah? I just want to say something. Uh, I want to thank Bob and Sarah for, for explaining to not only the school board, um, but also the public, so that they understand that the sacrifices that they may be making uh, with their families or their schedules um, is, is being utilized in, in a very productive way that will enhance their, stu their children's performance. And, uh, and it's a necessity, um, but it, it is for the good of the students. So. Um, I do appreciate us taking the time to communicate that. I also just wanted to say that I had an opportunity to look through those local assessments last year with Sarah to try and understand what that really meant. And I would encourage 
any parents to, to ask your, your, student, your kids' teachers to, to do that because it would really help you to see the huge amount of work that has to go into developing these local assessments. It's, it's pretty enormous. And um, we do know that it is tough for a lot of families, the, the late start days, but it's mandated and we have to do it. And um, I think that the system is in good hands with Sarah helping us through that. So thanks. Yes. I actually have one other. I have a question. Um, do we have a sense of the number of families that are struggling as a result of these late start days? I'm aware that we do offer some ex extended care through the community services, but that at the moment it's completely at capacity. And do we have a sense of how many people outside of the, the, the extended care programs are looking for assistance for that um, time, f the um, late start days, because these are probably families that don't normally need extended care, have made arrangements for the, the normal school day, but on these late start days find themselves with some difficulties. And I'm wondering, do we know how many there are? And, and, um, and, uh, and if there is a significant number within the financial constraints that we know we have, um, is there a way that we could potentially brainstorm with the schools as to uh, whether we can find volunteers on a rotating basis to be with the kids? Is that possible? Is that legally possible? Um, Rebecca, I, I don't know the answer to your question. Um, we don't know the exact number. Um, I'm meeting with Tom tomorrow um, to look at uh, one um, solution that was tried a few years back and that was to um, use some of the school staff um, early in the morning or um, who were not involved in, in this type of work. Um, we will be exploring that possibility and seeing what the interest is out there. Right. I know Sue has about half of her uh, normal uh, daycare students. That's about 60 students who are coming on a regular basis. Um, and they have, there are 120 who have the option to sign up, and there are half of them, roughly, who are taking advantage of that. The, the, the people who are in daycare of the one The extended daycare. Yes. But if there is somebody who's not normally enrolled in it, they cannot. I um, understand that. And, the, I'm just and those are the people, that. yes, that's, that's correct. And those okay. are the people we would be um, looking to find out how many how would many be are. interested yeah, that's and how many would need care. Okay, thank you. And we will, I will not, it will not be ready for the next early, you know, late start day. Mm. But um, we will get busy with that and see if we can't do something by the um, beginning of the, the calendar year at the very latest. Great. Okay? Thank you. Um, and with Sarah, I also thank all of the staff of Cape Elizabeth because um, if people think that they're sitting around drinking coffee, they're sadly mistaken. Um, they are busy all the time when I've gone through the schools and looked at the work that they've been trying to get done and the, the sharing that's going on. Um, update on building projects. We are at the point with Pond Cove Kindergarten Wing where they began painting today inside. And so um, that is moving right along. Um, we have windows coming in the next two weeks. Um, we'll be installed as soon as they arrive and um, we'll then be ready to do the, the remainder of the finish work. Um, we are looking at a turnover to us and to Pond Cove on or about the, uh, between the 7th and 10th of January, if things continue to be on schedule. Um, and that will give us plenty of time to uh, make the transition from the high school, um, where the kindergartens have been for a number of years, to, um, to the Pond Cove School. Um, and we are planning that still for February vacation, that students will finish at the high school um, before February vacation and will start at Pond Cove after. And we'll, another thing Tom and I will be talking about is exactly the, uh, the schedule for that and how we help the kindergarten teachers to, to see that that happens. Um, at the high school, um, there are several different parts of the project that are started, and because we are um, working around all of the student activities that are going on or trying to and I thank Jeff for all and his staff for all of their work on this um, 
there the biggest piece that is going on right now is in the um, uh, the locker room and gym area. Uh, it was exciting today to walk into the gym and see them getting ready to paint the lines for um, uh, basketball courts and volleyball courts and all kinds of other um, things down there. Um, so one coat of um, finish is already on. They are getting ready to paint those lines and then we'll move on to putting the final two coats of finish on. We're told that it will be turned over to us on or before the 22nd of November. So we have it for uh, the ba upcoming basketball season. Um, the locker rooms are another story. If um, you have been in there, it looks like um, the beginning of construction. I have some pictures that I'll pass down the, uh, to the school board tonight. Um, and we are also have sent those over to the high school so the kids can get a view because it's a construction area and they can't go in. But basically there are piles of dirt in what was uh, once the locker rooms. The entire floor and everything else in there has been torn out and there's all new piping being laid at the moment and uh, repacking the, the um, soil to, uh, to again pour new floors and I think new floors are coming up on half of that um, within about a week and a half. So um, they are making progress, but that's a huge area and a lot of work to be done down there. At the same time, they have started to put the foundation in for the expanded cafeteria, and they are working in some of the classrooms on the second floor. Um, we don't want to turn anything more over to them up on the second and third floor until all of the submittals uh, to the uh, architect and the um, construction company are done because if it's a shame to tear something apart and then have it sit there unusable um, until we can get all the pieces in. So we're not starting on any more upstairs until everything is ready to go in and completely finish whatever they're going to start. Um, and I think that that's, you know, been a good, good move on on the part of the high school. So uh, lots of things going on. Um, we're feeling good about what's going on and, and the work that's getting done. Um, we're meeting weekly at the high school and um, about every two weeks um, of some kind of meeting um, at the Pond Cove as we continue to pr proceed. Um, First of all, just another separate issue, and that is a big thank you to people who um, helped to see that the tax cap um, was not enacted. Um, uh, you can't imagine the stress that the possibility of the Pulaski measure put on staff members, on uh, programs, on administrators, on everybody in the system, um, because trying to deal with um, with a tight budget is one thing, trying to deal with a budget that could have gone down as much or more than $4 million was a totally different um, issue. And um, so just my thanks to all of the people who um, supported the schools in our recommendation not to, and the school board in our recommendation not to uh, uh, pass that measure. Um, I, we did get a letter of recognition or a copy of a letter from the Congress of the United States to uh, Cape Elizabeth Middle School on being named a state champion by the President's Council on Physical Fitness. Um, our congratulations to uh, um, Andy Strout and Sarah, is it Kinsella? Kinsella? Um, for all of their work in making that happen. Um, our workshop this month is going to be a week from tonight, next Tuesday night, and instead of holding it here, we are going to be holding it, uh, going to our vocational school paths in uh, Portland at, uh, on Allen Avenue. Um, the public is invited, and this is the meeting, uh, another meeting on essential programs and services, the program that Rebecca was talking about, and will give us um, hopefully a much better idea on exactly what our funding will be looking like as we uh, move forward into the budget season. Uh, we do have some of the town council members joining us, at least one, and we do have uh, our new representative, Connie Goldman, joining us that night. Um, we, have, um, we have received the approval of funding for our federal safe and drug-free schools uh, money. Um, that is a, a, an annual grant that we have to apply for 
and uh, we have been uh, notified that that has been approved. And um, I did have a second draft, and I thank, first of all, I thank board members and um, administrators and others for their input on the original draft on a teacher job description. Um, I have redrafted it with some of those things, or as many as I could in there. I've shared a copy with um, Shari for the Teachers Association, and um, I share copies with the school board of a second draft, and, and uh, we are not ready to take any actions on these as yet, but um, I did want to get those out to you uh, since we're meeting this evening. And I believe that is it, unless there are questions. Oh, yes. Um, our, our incoming superintendent, um, Susan, was here about two weeks ago mm -hmm. and uh, spent an afternoon uh, touring the schools um, and meeting with Ann and myself um, for about an hour, a little more than an hour before that tour and uh, with, my, with me for about another hour and a half after that. Um, she is going to be visiting on a fairly regular basis um, we, are, we are trying to work her visits around her schedule in Connecticut as well as our schedule up here because she does want to meet with the school board, she does want to meet with the um, district leadership team, and she does want to meet with parent groups and others as the year goes along. So um, we are coordinating those dates and um, she is to get back to me this week with some suggested dates and we'll take it from there and we can always um, um, call some special meetings if we need to, but we'll try to see if she can't be here for some of our regular meetings. Great. Thanks, Bob. Next, we have our principal's report, and first we'll move to Pond Cove, and um, I guess uh, Fran Vita Taylor and Shari Robinson will be presenting tonight. very much for inviting us here this evening. We're excited to be here. I'm Shari Robinson, the Pond Cove Media Specialist, and Fran Vita Taylor, fourth grade teacher. And um, we have with us also tonight Ian McInerney, a student who worked with us last year on this project. Um, I'm going to hand you some packets, and there's no tests involved, and I don't expect you to know it, but we did this presentation at Actum, and it has in it all the information about how we worked with parents and um, the actual lessons and the bibliography. So I don't want to, you to be intimidated, but I'm going to hand those packets out and then we're just very briefly going to follow that for our presentation. Sorry, should I? Do you think I should move on? I've got to get an extra Yes, we're actually going to use this part of the Um, this project was a um, collaboration between uh, Franny and myself, and we were um, working with the students to um, teach them poetry, writing, and also the fundamentals of digital photography. And um, on the third page of your packet, there's a budget that we um, used as a presentation to the Panko Parents Association for a grant. And, um, the, initially, the Panko parents gave us five cameras <coughs> um, that came with all the uh, battery chargers and, and um, little cases for them. And um, these were the cameras that the children used at home as well as in school. And um, 
I think Franny is now going to talk to you a little bit about, we're just going to briefly follow this outline and just kind of give you an idea of how the project itself was implemented. I can't read the deep <laughs> um, um, First of all, I just want to say that um, I was on a leave of absence a couple of years ago. And during that time, I had the time to uh, pursue my interest in photography in particular digital photography. And I've recently had a couple of solo shows, one that is up right now. So it was out of that leave of absence, and I thank the district for that, that this project then emerged. Um, let's see. Uh, the project started really with the children observing photographs, learning how to really look at photographs and uh, look at camera angles and mood and feeling of pictures and deciding what was their favorite part. and starting to get them to kind of slow down and really look at images in a different way. And um, they also then looked at historical photographs of Maine, um, mostly pictures of children. Uh, we found them um, from the Library of Congress online and from the Maine Memory Network online. And many of them involved pictures of, of kids. And that was kind of fascinating for them. And we also showed them many books of photography uh, that we accumulated um, over the course of the year and uh, that the Media Center purchased. And uh, they were fine art, um, books of fine art photography. This is just one example. This book is by Aaron Siskin, and it's abstract photography. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because later on when we show you, in a few minutes, as I say, when we show you um, some of the images that the, pic that the kids took, you'll see the influence of um, these kinds of images on their work. So they were really affected by what they saw, which was, which was really interest, fascinating to, for me to see. Um, so the um, project was really an intertwining of a poetry unit and photography teaching. So uh, the kind of the lessons sort of alternated between uh, photography lessons and poetry lessons. And the kids were then writing poetry about what they were seeing. So that's the basic idea. I won't go into too much detail here, but if you want to learn more about it, most of it's in that packet. So uh, the next step then, after they learned how to really look at pictures and, and were learning about poetry, they uh, learned how to take pictures. And they learned about framing and angles and um, composition. And um, they learned how to use the camera and be very careful with it, which is very important. And they took pictures in school and at home and all, all the while writing poetry as we went through this process. And then the culminating uh, product was a book of photographs and poetry, and um, also a frame, like a, a matted uh, photograph, which you will see soon, <laughs> and a matted poem that was all on display in the media center for kind of an opening reception for the children. And it was a really lovely event. Parents were invited. And each child chose a favorite poem and a photograph to share with the group. So we have a little very brief slideshow that shows publishing party, um, some of, a couple of historical photos that the kids saw. Uh, Shari will read along uh, some of the poems that the kids have written. And um, also one uh, fine art photo that the kids wrote about. And then some of the kids' work including Ian's, <laughs> and, he, and he'll be reading his poetry. And Gary Lloyd just gave us a lesson <laughs> a couple hours ago. I think it was hit every button twice. Yeah, it's <laughs>
Many of the photographs were on display. They were very enthusiastic. <laughs> and they read aloud a poem and showed a photograph. And this is a historical photograph from Aroostook County uh, taken during the Depression. And, uh, Shari's going to read aloud a couple of poems that the children wrote about this photograph. First one was entitled Boy. Boy, looking, staring, seeing, he wishes. Walking, jogging, running, he wishes. Hurling, throwing, passing, he wishes. Boy, but he can't. And um, another one inspired by the same uh, photograph. I wonder why we are poor. I wonder why this guy is here taking our picture. I wonder why we live here. I wonder why I can't play. I wonder. And the last one that, um, from this picture is called Patience. Perfect waiting, patience. I would scream and shout, patience. But not her, patience. Still as a tree, quiet as a lamb, patience. Wow. This one was taken in Portland in the early 1900s. Playing with blocks, building tall towers, sitting on chairs, watching the hours, looking at things, teaching things, learning things, dark, gloomy, quiet day. Waiting, waiting for my turn, watching the people use all the blocks and watching the one block that could make them all fall, waiting. It happens and the blocks tumble down, 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 waiting. The noise still ringing in your ears. It is your turn now. You stack up the blocks and you tip it over with one final block. And this is from a book of fine art photographs geared toward children about te you know, teaching them about photography. This is called Rain Catchers. Pit pat, pit pat. Goes the rain as it falls to the ground, but not all of the rain falls to the ground. We, the rain catchers, open our mouths, taste the sweet, joyful drops of heaven. The next two photographs were taken by children, and we included them because that we thought they were good examples of um, how the kids we thought were affected by this kind of book. And the very next one, I, I think, will make that obvious. And this photograph was by Ian, who is here with us this evening. And he's going to read about his poem called Bunny. Soft, snuggly, jumping, eating, sleeping. Fuzzy, balls of joy, cute. It's a kind of. Next one of the abstract ones. <laughs> yes, the next one is an abstract one. Exactly, that's right. And uh, this is a toilet flushing. You <laughs> should. <laughs> 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 And uh, I wrote it kind of in that, because that's how it went down. Mm -hmm. 
Swirling down the drain, leading to the sea. That's how it goes. Leading down the drain and, and meeting underwater. <laughs> oh, yes. Can you finish? Might walk around and chill. Oh, this is it. Our pink brain. Um, and uh, in conclusion, we, we also wanted to um, be sure and let you know that we now have a kit available with 10 cameras in it um, and all the paraphernalia that goes with it, as well as the packet that you have with all the lessons in it and letters home to parents to help kids get ready to use it. And those are, that's all together in the media center so that teachers can take, these, um, take it out and do the same project with other classes at other grade levels. So it's a very exciting project. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank um, Fran, you, and Shari for putting that together. I think that was really wonderful to have a different kind of presentation from our schools. And Ian. Okay. <laughs> Ian, I want to thank you for coming. I loved your photos, um, especially the second one, and your poetry was very imaginative. And having you come, I think, is a, a wonderful thing for our school board meeting. I, I'd like to thank your dad, Tom, for also allocating your evening tonight to come. Thanks so much. We hope you know it's a hat, too. Yeah. <laughs> Every day is <it's> here. <laughs> Okay, um, next is the high school, Jeff. I want to um, talk about a few things, but I actually wanted to spend the bulk of my time talking about the use of the laptops at the ninth grade. Uh, to give you some examples of the types of things that students in the ninth grade have been doing with laptops. Um, and first, uh, I guess I'd like to thank the school board and, and Patty, who I think has just left from CIF, uh, for making it possible for laptops to come to the high school. These are just some snapshots. I went around the school today and asked teachers of ninth, grade, uh, ninth graders how they've used these uh, so far and where they see them using them in the future. Uh, on the very first day that the students had the laptops, every single ninth grader uh, used them to do a career search uh, coordinated by our guidance office, uh, which was made possible really by two decisions that the school board made last year. One is to, to make the laptops come into the high school, and the second one is to add a guidance counselor, uh, the purpose of which, uh, one of the major purposes of which was to try to help us do a better job of addressing the needs of younger students. And I think we've that has begun to pay dividends already. Um, in mathematics, uh, most if not all the students who are currently taking geometry, uh, which is about half of our ninth grade students, have used a program called Geometer's Sketchpad, uh, which is installed on the hard drives of the laptops as part of the common image that all students have with them on, the, on those computers. Uh, and in most cases, students in geometry have used the Geom Geometer Sketchpad more than, more than once, um, and they will be using it any number of times in the future. Uh, it's made the, the math teacher's job a lot, a lot easier uh, to be able to have all students have access to that who are taking their courses. Um, some of our algebra students uh, will be using a program called Green Globs, uh, which is also installed as part of one of the standard uh, software packages, precisely so that our students can use that. Um, in math tutorial, which is another one of our classes, um, students have done math games that are found on the web as practice for some of the skills that they have been learning in, in uh, the math tutorial class. Our physics students um, have engaged in web searches, um, and they have also used the laptops to do data collection and, and analysis using probeware. Um, some of which we purchased with the support of the school board and some of which we've purchased with the support of the high school parent association. Uh, but these physics students have used the laptops in labs involving math sensors and photo gates. 
um, and they have also used them to play, again, some physics simulation games, uh, which really bring home some of the very abstract concepts that we ask students to learn in ninth grade physics. In social studies, students have, they'll have used the laptops for research projects, among other things, on ancient Greece and on different philosophers in the ancient world. They uh, have performed web quests uh, related to national and local elections that took place last week. In the library, students have learned from Mrs. Bell, our librarian, uh, who is also acting as our laptop teacher leader in the high school, um, how to use some of the many school research databases, and they've also learned to how to use advanced, how to perform advanced Google searches. Um, and at the end of each of the sessions, Mrs. Bell has urged her students, the students that she's teaching about how to do the advanced Google searches to take the new skills that they've learned in the library from Mrs. Bell and go home and teach their parents how to do advanced Google searches um, to save a lot of time and a lot of energy. And she knows that at least some students have done that because they've come back and explained to her what they've done. Um, the, the instruction that Mrs. Bell is giving to students in the library is related to the students' iSearch projects, uh, which are a standard feature of our ninth grade program uh, in English classes. Um, and these are major research papers. These are the major research papers that the students do in English in the ninth grade. Um, in addition to these structured uses, and these are just examples, uh, many students are using the laptops for word processing, um, a whole host of school assignments, uh, which makes it both easier for them to produce the assignments and easier for the teacher to read the assignments at the same time. And some students have explored the note-taking software that is included as part of the laptop's image. Um, and we will be doing some catch-up professional development with teachers to, to, so that they can understand the capabilities of that note-taking software. And under planning stages right now, our teachers will be getting instruction from Gary Lenoy in the use of iMovie and iPhoto. Um, and we are uh, expecting that we'll, we're seeking to have a couple of middle school teachers who have uh, volunteered and expressed an interest in coming up and sharing best practice with the high school faculty based on the experience that they've had for the last couple of years. So that's a quick sort of snapshot of some things that have been going on um, and will continue to go on uh, with the laptops uh, by virtue of your making that possible and the Cables with Education Foundation making that possible. Um, the building renovation, I just wanted to mention a couple things just from my point of view. I, we're, we are, I am very pleased with the work of Peyton Construction as the construction manager. Um, we have had, understandably, a few glitches, primarily around communications, uh, which we have worked out. Um, and I'm, I'm very glad that we're starting in a fairly s small way um, and have been able to work out some of those things. Um, but communication is now going very, very well. And the glitches in a, in a huge project, which is a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and lots of coordination, they were inevitable to happen, and they've happened, and they were, they're working out very constructively. It is truly exciting to watch, particularly the gym floor being done, um, although I get the privilege of walking in and seeing the dirt and seeing the pipes and everything else. But it is really exciting today. Um, it was quite a smell uh, this evening as I was going by because they've actually started to do the painting of the gym floor. Um, and they are trying to do that as much as possible outside of school hours. But inevitably, there are odors that are happening and other things and clear signs that we are a renovation in, in progress. Um, I will say that the gym floor work and the locker rooms, although uh, students see that less because it's behind plastic and they can't really see it, is particularly exciting to our seniors uh, who were worried uh, when they walked into school at the beginning of the year that they were only going to see the downside of the construction project in the form of an ugly battleship gray senior hallway. Now they're realizing that they will get the benefit of the gym and a little bit later the locker room as well. Um, we are getting some experience in room juggling at the high school. We did another room juggle today. Um, it's good practice for what will happen after the kindergartners move out um, and we actually get to um, devote a big chunk of the first floor uh, and put that under renovation at the same time. And I will say that I am personally learning an awful lot about construction projects um, and it's been quite a, it's, it's, it's been a great learning experience. Just a couple of other things. First of all, I just wanted to uh, put in a plug for a presentation at some time before the school board, whether at a regular school board meeting or at a workshop or whenever it can be arranged, for three different topics that I think might be of interest. Um, the results of the Physics First sequence, um, which the school board endorsed a few years ago, 
Um, we have teachers who would be delighted to come in and share with you some anecdotal evidence of what they see happening in Physics First and also some very hard data uh, about the learning that students are, are experiencing um, in, under the new sequence of courses. The use of the, the Geometry Sketchpad software program. Um, Evan Thayer, who's one of our new math teachers and teaching a lot of geometry, has volunteered to, to, to teach a mini lesson using Geometry Sketchpad. The best, best forum place to do that would be our ATM room, uh, where we can project things in a big screen and do that sort of thing. He'd be delighted to do that. And another one is a program, an instructional strategy that I've talked about a couple of times before with the board, and it's, it's in our foreign language one and two classes, French and Spanish one and two, the use of total physical response storytelling instructional technique. And teachers, again, would be delighted to share with the board um, anecdotal evidence of what students are learning, and again, data that demonstrates um, the improved learning that students are getting in, in the early years of French and Spanish. <coughs> Just have two other things. One is to mention that we were very pleased with the number of students um, who in the National Merit Competition have been identified as either uh, semi-finalists or commended students. Um, I think we set a record. Um, and, and, I, and I would, I, and I think that those students, I think there's 16 of them, which is remarkable, um, deserve, deserve a lot of mention. And I think usually the board does some kind of presentation later in the year, so I'm not going to read a list of, of names, but um, if I, those are certainly available. It's quite, a, quite a, um, an honor for us to have those students and all of our students here. And the last thing is I just want to mention that uh, Doug Worthley, one of our science teachers, and, and myself just got back from two days in Washington, D.C., um, where we came together with principals from 300 schools across the country who had been awarded those blue ribbon um, recognition awards by the U.S. Department of Education. And I wanted to thank the school board for making it possible for us to go down there um, and the parents for making it possible to get this award by sending us great material to work with. That is my report. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff, do you have the list of names of the students on you? I don't have it yeah. with okay. me. I can easily get it and send it to Bob. Yeah. Yep. Just, okay. Jeff, I got a question. Sure. The, the gym floor is up two and a half inches higher than the, the original floor. Yes. Then what do you do with the basketball nets? They got to be raised. They already. No, have, we they already been. <laughs> two and a half inches. I was going to say, Henry, we opened our program up to shorter students. <laughs> <laughs> The baskets have, have they already been raised? Oh, I didn't realize that. I knew they were going to be. Great. Any other questions for Jeff? Thank Thanks, Jeff. And next, uh, the middle school, we Nancy. Could <laughs> we could dump. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Um, just a couple of quick things to add to um, the report that Nora and Elsa gave. And I apologize, I didn't read the minutes that carefully to realize that Elsa's name had been misrecorded. Um, it is Elsa Mullen, not Liza Mullen. So my apologies to Elsa. I should have taken care of that for her, and that was my oversight. But the Sally Foster gift wrap paper, the people asked me to announce that it could be picked up this Friday. Um, at 2.30 in the cafetorium, and they'll have it all organized and ready to go. And they hope that everyone who purchased the paper remembers to come and pick it up. So, um, and we thank the public for their great support of that project. And I want to thank Diane Dickinson and M.A. Watson, our two parent volunteers who coordinate that, and all the many, many parent volunteers who will have worked on it and will continue to work on it through Friday. One of the things, um, just to make you aware of, if you haven't had a chance to notice it on our school website, um, Holly Smevog, our integrator um, for technology, has developed a program where she has a technology newsletter. And if you go on our website and just punch on it, you will see um, different articles that she's doing that teachers are submitting, um, kids are submitting, and they work. The I-team helps put this together, by the way. And it's a good way to keep up to date with all the different ways that technology is being used in the middle school. And this isn't just a story about the laptops in the seventh and eighth grade. We also have a lot of really wonderful submissions from the other grade level teachers and content area teachers as well, too. And she is going to be trying to do this. It won't come out every month, but about every six weeks there should be a new edition. Um, and it's just a nice way for everybody to keep up to date with the latest comings and goings of technology at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. 
We did, I did want to mention um, also that coming up, we have a couple of more events before our next school board meeting, and those would be our winter concerts. Um, actually, they're in the late fall concerts because winter hasn't actually started yet. Uh, but on December 9th, our sixth grade band and our fifth and sixth grade chorus will be performing in the cafetorium. This starts at 7 p.m. On Monday evening, December 13th, our seventh grade band, eighth grade band, and seventh and eighth grade chorus will be performing. And also this year, again, um, something we tried last year and it worked really well, our eighth grade jazz groups will be performing for the middle school students within the school day. Um, on December 21st, they'll perform for the fifth and sixth grade. We have a Tuesday morning jazz group that will do that performance. And then on Wednesday, the Thursday morning jazz, jazz group is going to perform for the seventh and eighth grade. And part of the purpose of doing this during the school day is so that we can use it as both a performance and an instructional opportunity. Terry White, our band director and our students in the jazz groups really help our other students understand how you attend a jazz concert, which is a bit different than the way you might go to another concert. And um, last year we tried it for the first time and it really worked very, very well. And then when it came time for the jazz cabarets in the spring, we had quite a few of our students who attended and they knew exactly what to do and had even an inkling of an idea of the kind of music they were listening to. So it was very nice to have that. And finally, I'll just close um, tonight with just saying um, thank you to Evan Solander and all of the parents and all of our student performers who helped put on our play. It was great fun um, to watch that. It's always a wonderful opportunity for someone like myself to um, spend, you know, three evenings with kids doing their very best work and at a time when they're having a great deal of fun as well. And I think if nothing else, um, certainly helped a lot of middle school students get introduced to William Shakespeare in a very nice way, in a way that, that made a lot of sense to them. So those are the things that are happening at the middle school. Thank you. Are there any questions for Nancy? Thanks, Nancy. Okay, moving on to committee reports. First, we'll have a report from the Finance Committee. Uh, I'm going to speak on behalf of the Finance Committee uh, for Kathy. Um, the Finance Committee met this evening at 7 o'clock, signed warrants and reviewed the appropriation report. We did see a report from the uh, Food Service Task Report. Um, where we uh, are following the accounts receivable and uh, the balance of the account is continued um, to decrease. So uh, there was some discussion on that. Uh, we also took a look at the PATS 0506 budget and uh, we will be approving the appropriation for that uh, later on this evening. And I also just want to report that last uh, Friday on November 5th, uh, the Budget Subcommittee of Finance met with both Bob and Paulina Portria uh, to start discussion uh, on developing this year's budget and the importance of working with both the Town Council and their finance chairs early on in the process. Uh, we did discuss the implications of question one with the 55% funding and essential program and services questions. Uh, we also discussed the importance of sharing uh, this with the, both the community and the town council. Um, and there um, was some timelines uh, set up and discussed uh, to work towards. Thanks, Elaine. Um, next is the report of the policy committee. Um, the policy committee met on November 2nd, and the first item we just did a quick review of how our committee was doing in terms of reviewing our entire policy manual. And the one thing that we are gonna be, um, I just wanna mention, um, trying to do a little bit differently, is asking for input from all board members who are not on the committee. Um, a little bit earlier in the process, we're going to encourage people to come to the policy committee meetings and have the more in-depth discussions there at the committee level so that we aren't having them here at this meeting only because um, it's somewhat slow going and we just can't take up that much time at this uh, monthly meeting to have those kinds of discussions. But we'd like to encourage and invite uh, parents and viewers to please come to those policy committee meetings. Our agendas are 
um, on the website so you can see a day or two ahead what we're going to be discussing if that interests you to attend. Uh, we discuss policy ADAA again, and we will be presenting um, that later this, this evening. And we also discussed, I think that the high school students discussed that the Student Advisory Council is discussing the substance abuse policy and we're going to be looking at that later on in the year when that comes under the appropriate um, section in our policy manual. We also discussed student memorials policy and the high school and Jeff will be doing a little bit more work on that for a future presentation from the committee. And finally, um, we did final work on Section G, which we'll, we will be presenting for first reading later this evening. Okay, moving on, we have a report from the Communication Committee. Well, we have our first meeting scheduled for November 17th at 3.15. Uh, location to be determined, but I think it's going to be the Jordan Conference Room. We're still hoping to get a high school representative to attend the uh, committee meetings. Um, Elaine, Trish, and I attended the Middle School Parents Association this meeting this morning. We outlined the work of the school board to date. We had an interesting conversation on improving and increasing communication between the various parents associations and trying to support um, each other's events, and also improving the communication with CIF and the school board in terms of uh, keeping the goals aligned. Um, I believe that Ann will be attending the PCPA meeting on Tuesday, November 30th, and Elaine and I will be attending the High School Parents Association meeting on January 12th. And that's it. Thanks, Rebecca. Next, we have unfinished business. Um, the first item is consideration for pol of policies for second reading. And the first is policy GBO identification badges. And as chair of the policy committee, I guess I'd like to move that we adopt the new policy GBO identification badges as presented in your packet. Is there a second? Second. Trish? Okay, discussion? No discussion or questions? All in favor of adopting this? Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. The second item is um, policy ADAA, ethical and responsible behavior. And again, as chair of the policy committee, I'd like to move that we delete this policy from our manual. Is there a second? Trish? Any discussion? Uh, yes, um, and I think you and I talked about this. Uh, I think the, the reasons given for the deletion of ADAA is that we have a code of conduct uh, at policy JIC, and um, when I read that policy, it is a descriptive policy as to what the various codes of conduct should be but it does not give any discussion as to the method by which the code of conduct is determined, by whom, through what processes, and during what sort of time frame. So I, I still see a need for ADAA, and um, I plan on voting against this. Other comments or questions? All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Okay, motion carries 3 2. Um, the next item on unfinished business is consideration of a request from a high school social studies teacher regarding a field trip to Washington. And I believe Ted Jordan was going to present. Jeff, are you presenting on his behalf? Ted, Ted appeared last month and sends his apologies. He wasn't able to be here tonight. Um, I think the one question that um, was still open that I think Kevin asked at the last meeting was how much was this going to cost? 
um, and it's 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 approximately five hundred dollars, which is similar to the amount that was charged last year to students on a similar trip. Um, Ted has talked uh, at the parent-teacher conferences to almost all of the parents of the students who are involved in the trip who would be going, and all seem to be fine with that, with that amount of money. Ted is going to be talking to the individual students and the individual families to see if there is privately any concerns about any of them to see if we need to provide some assistance to anybody. But at this point, it doesn't appear to be the case that we would need to provide any assistance. But if we can, we will. Or if he's willing to do some fundraising or something like that as a group to, to make it possible for all the students uh, who are in the class to be able to go to that trip. That was the one question that was still open that Ted, Ted could remember. And um, he asked me to present that information to the board. So then you'd like us to move ahead in approving the trip tonight? If one way or the other, it would be yeah. good to know. <laughs> OK. Um, so then could we have a motion to approve the high school social studies trip to Washington, DC? So moved. Second. Yeah. Any more discussion or questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Under new business, we have a consideration of request regarding a field trip for a high school um, CP government class. Jeff, yeah. <laughs> this is this is also a Ted Jordan trip. Um, a different different group of students. Um, Ted did a similar trip a couple of years ago. The students have been studying. Um, the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments, which are essentially the amendments that give um, citizens certain rights in the context of pr uh, criminal investigations and criminal trials and those sorts of things. And in connection with that, he brings in speakers from the local police and any number of agencies. And the culmination, which he's hoping to be able to do, is to bring the students down to, uh, to Boston to meet with an FBI agent in Boston that Ted knows and has spoken to his classes in the past. Um, and the approximate cost for this trip will be, he said, between 20 and $30 for the students. It's not an overnight trip, um, and we would arrange a coach and do that sort of thing. Thanks, Jeff. OK, so we need a motion to um, approve the high school CP government class trip. So moved. Lane, second. Trish, any questions or discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next. Will we take all of us, too? And <laughs> some interesting trips. Mm. Next item is consideration of policies for first reading. First, we have policy ABC. This is another A policy because it was inadvertently left out of the Drummond Woodsum <clears throat> review manual, and we didn't catch it until after we went through the A policies last time. Um, so, uh, and actually, what we're, recomm what, what, the, what we're recommending is that it remain the same as it is currently in our book. And it is um, file, a, file ABC, student involvement and decision making. So um, we just want to open this up for discussion questions at this point as it's the first reading. OK. All right. Uh, so then moving on. Um, we have the G section of the policy manual. And for first reading, we'll be looking at policies GA through GCQC. So I'd like to open this up for discussion and questions. And did everybody have a chance to number there? Mm. OK. Just for um, the people at home or the people who don't have this in front of them, um, the G section are the personnel uh, policies and deal with everything from personnel goals to prohibited um, or staff conduct with students to um, 
those types of things all through um, the, the, the G policies. And um, it's a lengthy section. We did not get all the, the policy committee did not get all the way through, um, but we did want to bring some of them and not try to bring all of them to one meeting um, because it is such a lengthy section. So um, it is up for first reading. Thanks, Bob. So I guess if anybody has questions, they can take those up at any for any policies that they have them for. And also, some of some of the policies that we're um, recommending remain as they are currently. Some were making minor changes. Some were changing entire sections of the policy. Okay, I have a question for GBEC, that's page seven. Um, is there going to be any sort of language that will address whether the supervisor and or building supervisor should let the superintendent know that there is a an indication of a problem. As far as I can tell, there's nothing in this language. Could, could you ask your question again, Rebecca? Sure. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no language in this policy that states um, whether or when this, a supervisor will inform the superintendent that there is a problem that has been observed or there's indications of a problem. I think in another, Bob, is this right? In another policy, it does address informing the superintendent of different things, but you're wanting to see it right in, in this yes. policy. And I believe that the other policy you're referring to was um, uh, the one in which there would be notification about um, a complaint. Um, right. It's not about this yeah. situation. So um, let, I'll make a note, and when we meet again with the policy, okay. we can take a look at that. Thank you. Did we, on, on page 18, um, under policy GCF, that we noted that the meaning of the last sentence in the first paragraph was unclear. Was that being rewritten for us to approve, or was it being substituted with the comment C, Hiring Procedures Manual? The, the decision at the personnel committee, at the personnel committee, at the policy committee was um, to see hiring procedures manual because there's a lengthy ex uh, explanation. explanation of that in there. So is that last sentence? The note, the meaning? You're um, no, the, the last sentence uh, starting oh, good how good staff, staff hiring, hiring should be done, um, is that being eliminated? We didn't, I don't think we talked about that. No. Yeah, I think I think we said the, the clarification would be the C hiring procedures C manual and leave it as is. Oh, in order to support that sentence. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right to clarify that sentence. Thank you. Fine. Uh, one suggestion that um, Anne made for our second reading would be that we actually type them the way they will appear, rather than with the all mm. of these, because there there are so many places that. Um, even in the policy committee, it was hard at times to follow yeah. um, exactly what would be in and what would be out. Um, I have a question or comment for GCOC. 
page 33. Um, I guess what, uh, from, atten from attending some meetings last year, and I could be wrong, so I'm going to look to the members that were serving. It seemed as if um, the administrative evalu the evaluation of administrators was conducted as a group that, and in fact, actually no reports were actually made on the individual administrators. Um, or was, is that something that would be done in executive session, perhaps? Maybe that's why I didn't see it. Okay. Any personnel issues are done in executive session. Okay. And need to be. Okay. That's, it just occurred to me. Then my only final question would be, um, or suggestion would be that uh, for the um, administrators, they'd be voted on separately or individually, not as a group. My understanding from last year was that everybody was presented, like how we kind of do it with co-curricular at the moment. Mm -hmm. All these names are presented and we kind of vote on them globally. And um, I think maybe for at least the upper levels, perhaps we should consider um, breaking that out a little bit. Any time during a meeting, that can be a motion to either break them out, and you can do it with the coaches, with anyone. We've done it different ways yeah. in the past, and at the request of a board member. I think member, it's usually done that way for, okay. you know, because usually there's a discussion in executive session beforehand, and then there's, if they're either broken out or they're done okay. um, all together, depending on whether people wish to vote differently on certain items. Great, thank you. Okay. I do have one um, that Shari, who was here earlier and is not still here, had mentioned in an email to me um, some concerns with um, page 11, um, the personnel records. Page 11, oh. under personnel records. Um, the. the um, our attorneys had recommended um, striking that um, last paragraph mm -hmm. on removal. Um, she expressed a concern with that. I did respond to her that, um, that the school board was adding the opportunity to respond in the paragraph above that, um, and that um, even the way it was worded in the past, any any uh, removal of anything from the records was really at the discretion of the superintendent if you read um, what's there. Um, I will talk to her further and see if she still has concerns with that, but I just bring it up because it was raised. So I guess that we could, if after you speak with her, Bob, we could discuss that more at the policy, policy. committee and before our um, second reading mm -hmm. for that. And one other question that came up at the policy committee was where does the policy on job descriptions fit. And actually, the policy on job descriptions should be policy GCA, which we don't have. So we may also want to look at that in the policy committee. We have other G policies to bring forward, and we could bring something forward there. But I will get a, a sample policy on, on job descriptions, because I know you started, you started with the administrator ones last spring. We're working on teacher one now. We still have um, educational technician ones to do, um, but we should have a policy that at least says we want to have them if that's what we want. Um, so we'll bring forward a, you know, a draft on that for the next policy meeting. Okay. Are there any other questions on these G policies? Okay, so we'll be taking these back to take a look at some of those suggestions and discuss those, and then hopefully moving on to the other Jeeps. Mm -hmm. 
Next item under uh, new business is consideration of approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for 0405 school year. And I'll hand that to Bob. Um, this is a, a um, piece that is put into the school board agenda every uh, year, and generally it's done um, at the beginning of the school year. Um, I think where we didn't have a regular August meeting, we only had a special meeting. It was not done this year, and so we don't formally have your approval to receive and spend um, federal and state grants for this year, and that's the reason that it is on this, this agenda. Um, we have a number of grants that um, we depend on for different parts of um, school funding, and you went through them, I know, in, in last year's budget uh, because I, I saw some minutes of those being asked to be broken out and you know where the monies came from and what they were used for um, and those are the monies we're talking about here okay so then we need a motion for the approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the 0405 school year so moved second elaine any questions discussion all in favor opposed motion carries 5-0 Next item is consideration of superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for winter 0405. We have a number of positions um, up this evening. Um, for winter of 2004 at the high school, we have the returning coaches Paul Snyder, assistant indoor track, Mark Joyce, assistant indoor track. Mike Bartley, diving coach, Kurt Brown, assistant ice hockey. New coaches include Joseph Robinson, assistant ice hockey, um, Lauren B Blair, assistant ice hockey. And for the middle school coaching positions, we have Terry Long, seventh grade girls basketball, Steve Martin, eighth grade girls basketball, Mike Miller, middle school Nordic skiing. Those are the positions. So do we have a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions? So moved. Second. Rebecca, any discussion? I just had a quick question. Do we have, this is going to sound really stupid, but why do we have three assistant hockey coaches? I can't answer that right now. Um, but I know that, I was just curious that uh, I know that sometimes they they split positions um, sometimes you'll have a a uh, you know a goalie um, one person focusing on goalies another person focusing on offense those kinds of things but I will get an answer for you just curious and I know that these are all positions that have been approved in the budget so it's not a matter of the money it's a matter of why yeah I'll just find out and, and these positions are not necessarily positions that are coming out of the athletic budget. Some of them are being approved, I think, um, just for the position and the person by the school board. So if, if people are a little nervous about where the money is and is that an excessive nature to be spending money on, it would be supported by what is needed by the, the team and the athletic director's recommendations. So, like, as hockey is one of those sports that is, it's funded quite a bit by, by boosters. boosters. Any other questions on that? All in favor? Opposed. Motion carries 5-0. Next is the consideration of adoption of the school board goals, and I'll hand that to Elaine. Thank you. Um, in October, uh, the school board met several times to develop uh, their goals for the next uh, one to three years. Um, while these are different than the school's actual goals, they are meant to dovetail with our future directions and our district's mission and vision. Um, we used the Maine School Board Association's board uh, responsibility guidelines, and we established 19 specific goals that are, encompass 10 areas. Uh, each goal includes an overall responsibility, a description of the work to be accomplished, uh, followed by the committee uh, who is responsible for its implementation, along with a timeline. Um, 
the intent of this document is meant to be fluid. Um, as the goals are met one year, I believe uh, we will see future boards utilize this framework as, uh, to, gu to guide them in establishing new goals. Um, I don't know whether anyone really wants me to read them, but I believe we are planning on posting them on the school's website. They've been distributed to the district leadership team uh, and some of our communication pieces at our middle school parents meeting. Um, but I think that all the committees are ready to be uh, start meeting and, and working on some of these goals. Okay. I'd like to move that the school board accept the goals um, as we worked on on our workshops. Do we have a second? So second. Trish, any discussion? Bring it up. Well, I think we were going to make a slight wording Word. change to one of the Just policy, uh, one of the committee names. I think it was the advisory laptop committee was going to be changed to the technology, technology steering committee. Um, and that would be number two. Num number two, util under educational program. Uh, B, utilizing both state and local feedback indicators, assess the seventh through ninth grade laptop program for the purpose of determining the level of commitment for future expansion and updating. Responsibility advisory laptop committee would be changed to technology steering committee uh, with a time frame of one year. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a consideration of the formation of a standing personnel committee and thereby an elimination of what we currently call the negotiations committee. I would support that motion. <laughs> Do we have a second? No second. Okay, any discussion or comments about that? I guess I'd just like to explain that, um, <clears throat> as Elaine said in our goals, we did decide to establish a couple of, of a personnel committee. Um, we currently have what's called a negotiations committee that oversees all the uh, negotiations. And we've did determined that um, those responsibilities really fall under a personnel committee, but there might be some uh, other broader responsibilities that would also be included under that committee. So we just want to make the, change the name, but encompass the new responsibilities that are outlined in our new school board goals. Um, any other comments about that? Um, if this is the discussion, I think that we had agreed as a board that uh, the current two members of the negotiations committee, which are Kevin um, and Kathy Ray, um, would serve on the personnel committee with the um, perhaps addition of another school board member. Mm -hmm. And um, if um, This board approves, I would be glad to serve on that committee. Great. Thanks, Lee. Anything else to add to that? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is the consideration of the formation of a standing communication committee. <clears throat> oh, before we explain that, I guess we need to have a motion to discuss it, right? Okay, so could we have could we have a motion? So moved. Second. Trish, thanks. Again, just to explain, um, we we have a communication committee right now, but it was never formally voted in last year as a standing committee because we were waiting to see if we felt that it was something that we wanted to continue. And we do feel that way. We think it's necessary and important, so we want to make it a standing committee of our board. Rebecca, as chair of that, do you have any other? things to say about it? No. I just think uh, we're going to do some good work for the school community as a whole. Okay. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Um, and the last, the next one is a consideration of Cape Elizabeth's portion of the PATH budget for 0506 school. 
school year. Elaine? Oh, yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the board approve the path appropriation of $48,378.39 uh, for the 2005-06 budget. Second. Is there a second? Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Yeah. Oh, I was just going to just share with people that um, this this is for the net, the upcoming budget season. Um, it's ahead of our normal process, but it's something that we have to do to, as participants in past. And just so everybody knows, it's actually a decrease from what we paid last year. Great. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Uh, next, a consideration of action to approve an out-of-state field trip. Yes, we have a request um, from Betsy Nilsson, a computer teacher at the high school, um, for consideration of a proposal to take a class on a field trip to Hampton, New Hampshire. Um, the trip is proposed for late November, so we did need to move it on to this agenda. Um, and there is an explanation here. I think Jeff has more information, but I'll, shall I just read this first, Jeff, to start? Um, there will be 15 students and myself. We will rent a school bus from Custom Coach and Limo. The purpose of the trip is for students to observe and experience emerging technologies in the areas of robotics and graphics. This facility has state-of-the-art gaming technology, which has been enhanced by the use of a robotic pod and dome to create a virtual reality experience. We have recently studied the myriad of uses of computer technology and its integration into nearly every industry. We will begin a unit on graphics soon, and this field trip will expose them high-end, sophisticated applications of the software. In addition to the game entertainment element, this company, Holodeck, is examining educational and business uses for the collaborative interface their product provides, its use in corporate team building, training, educational virtual trips, et cetera. And I know that Betsy couldn't be here, but she did ask uh, if Jeff could speak for her. Just very quickly, um, I, the anticipated cost per student for this trip would be $10. Um, and again, we would get a sense of whether anybody needs any assistance with that. Um, and the, dead, the date she just found out from the company um, is December 1st, is the date that she proposes. She gave them a, a, a number of dates, including late November and that date as well, and apparently that worked out the best. I'm just curious, what's the name of the class, Jeff? Do you know? No, I knew I should have talked yeah. to Betsy about which what one she computer class? I'm just curious. I believe it's her um, digital design class is, I believe, the one that this that she's taking the kids on. Sounds great. It sounds like a yeah. fun trip and yeah. educational as well. Okay, so then we need a motion to approve the high school computer uh, class trip, out-of-state trip. So move. Second. Trish, any more questions or discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. At this point, we'd like to invite any um, comments from the public. Okay, seeing none, um, I just would like to share the upcoming dates to remember, school board workshop, with, which Bob mentioned earlier, will be held at PATHS next Tuesday, November 16th at 6.30. Policy committee will meet on Tuesday, December 7th in the Jordan Conference Room. Finance committee will meet Tuesday, December 14th, 6.30 here in the Jordan Conference Room. And our next, next school board meeting will be Tuesday, December 14th. A meeting adjourned. Thank you.